today's episode is all about simplifying your approach to your mobility and strength so you're able to build those things even with a busy schedule. I'm not going to be giving you any type of fitness gimmicks. I'm not going to make any unrealistic promises. If that's what you're looking for, there's hundreds of people on the internet that are willing to sell you something that's not gonna work. But for me, I made this video to help a former version of myself and other people in that predicament. Now, if you don't know my backstory, I'm a full-time practitioner in person, and I also have an online coaching service where I help people move and feel their best through mobility training, nutrition, and strength training. And as you can imagine, these two businesses kept me so busy to the point where I actually felt like a hypocrite because here I am coaching other busy professionals saying, you should be focusing on your nutrition. You should be nailing your strength and mobility training. But here I was skipping workouts, skipping lunches, not going for walks, basically doing the exact opposite of what I was preaching. It made me take a step back. If I'm unable to follow the recommendations that I was making, of course, other people aren't gonna be able to do so as well. So it made me think, what is the 80-20 rule of moving and feeling your best? And I came up with these three key areas that if we're able to nail on a relatively consistent basis, we are going to make some serious progress even with a busy schedule. Starting off with the first area of focus being strength training. I believe that everyone should be strength training anywhere between two to four times per week because the long list of benefits is well worth your time. You could be building protective strength so you're less likely to be injured in the future. You could be building or preserving uh, bone mass so you're less likely to break a hip if you fall. You are setting the foundation for mobility, meaning your nervous system is less likely to prevent you into deeper ranges of motion. You're gonna be producing muscle mass. So if you ever wanna go into a fat loss phase, it's actually going to be much easier because more muscle will actually boost your metabolism. The lists go on and on. And for the small amount of time that we can invest into this one style of training, it's just well worth it. Now you might be listening to this thinking to yourself, I know I should be strength training. I just don't have the time to do it. Well, here's a great strategy that you can use that's not only gonna build a well-rounded program, but it's going to allow you to get in and out of your workout sessions in under 30 minutes. It's called the category method. The category method is broken down into five separate categories, starting off with your push, pull, hinge, squat, and accessory. When it comes to these five categories, each one of them, you're gonna select one exercise until you get to the accessory group where you're actually going to select two of them. And to give you an example of how you would select exercises into each one of these categories, I'm gonna build a program right here on the fly. So for my push and pull exercises, I'm going to select an overhead press and a dumbbell row. The reason why I'm selecting these two movements is not only are they easy to superset, meaning I would do the overhead uh, press and then go immediately into the dumbbell row, but also it requires a small amount of equipment for you to perform this movement. The beauty of the category method is if we are able to pair our pushes and pulls together and our hinges and squats together, we can superset these two groupings of exercises so we're never actually truly resting and just twiddling our thumbs waiting for the next time to do the exercise. For our hinges and squats, the two exercises that come to mind is going to be the good morning and the goblet squat. Both these movements will produce a very strong set of legs and also build upon the mobility that you are looking to have. And then last but not least, we have two accessory slots that we need to fill. So let's cover what an accessory exercise is. I would love for you to think about accessory exercises as a flex position where if you feel like a certain area is a weak point on you or you feel like you're just not really targeting it with the other exercise selection, this is where you would fill that gap. For example, let's say I feel like my biceps aren't getting enough attention with all the pulls that I'm doing. That's okay. I can just throw in a bicep curl into the exercise routine to make sure I'm bringing up that area as well. Likewise, let's say my calves aren't getting a direct stimulus through my hinges and my squats, I can throw in a calf raise to make sure that those things aren't getting neglected either. 
If you're thinking to yourself, the category method makes a lot of sense, I just don't know enough exercises to fill these gaps, keep in mind that I have playlists I'll put somewhere on the screen here that you can click on, and it's going to give you an example of each one of these categories. And to keep things simple, if you're thinking to yourself, how many reps and sets should I be performing? A great starting point would be two to three rounds of 10 to 12 repetitions. Now, of course, you could do more or less depending on your goals and capabilities. Now, just to recap, if you are supersetting all your exercises between your pushes and pulls, your hinges and your squats, and your two accessory movements, and you're performing two to three rounds of 10 to 12 repetitions, this should easily be performed underneath the 30 minute mark so you can get right back to work and not feel like you're wasting any time. One last thing to mention before we move on to the next subject here, it would be beneficial if you put about 24 hours in between each one of your workout sessions. This will allow for you to recover properly and it will give you some time to work on the next area of focus, which is going to be mobility training. I found that mobility training is an amazing way to boost your rest days so you can get a little bit of active rest, but also you can start freeing up some of the restrictions that you find throughout your movement patterns. Now, when it comes to creating a mobility flow, we typically try to keep it anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes, because once again, we're just trying to shake loose and free up some of these restrictions. When it comes to actually selecting the movements of your mobility flow, that's going to be dependent on the restrictions that you are encountering. But with all the people that I've worked with in the past, I created a general program here that I'm going to share that I believe that is going to help almost everybody. Starting off with movement one, we are going to be doing elephant walks. Most people feel stiff in their hamstrings and this activity will allow us to explore deeper ranges of motion at higher levels of tension. Movement number two is windshield wipers. This allows us to get our hips in and out of rotation, which if you are a desk bound worker, I'm sure your hips haven't rotated in a very long time. So if we're able to free up our hips, typically speaking, your hips and lower back are going to feel amazing. Movement number three is going to be our wide based rotation. Being able to restore range of motion in the rotational pattern of our spine typically clears up mid back and neck stiffness. And last but not least, movement number four is our prone swimmers. This is my favorite exercise to strengthen and restore shoulder mobility. Not only does this exercise make us travel in all the ranges of motion that our shoulder is designed to do, but it doesn't require any equipment at all. So you can do it whenever you think of it. Notice if you were able to complete three strength training sessions and two mobility flows Monday through Friday, that's only going to account for about two hours out of your week. Now, if you were to ask me, dedicating two hours out of my week to move and feel my best is well worth my time investment, but that's only one piece of the puzzle. The last area of focus is going to tie it all together to make sure that you are truly moving and feeling your best. The third area that we're going to be focusing on is simplified nutrition. Now, if you've spent any time on the internet and you scrolled on Instagram, you're going to see a million people say, don't eat this, eat this, this is poison, this is good for you, and they're all pointing fingers, making everything super confusing. And as a busy professional, if you're confused, you're just gonna go off of what is convenient to you. So here's exactly how I keep my nutrition very simple, and I actually maintain a healthy, balanced diet. The first thing that I do is I focus on anchoring my meals with protein and fiber, because if I'm eating enough protein, my body can repair and grow, which is gonna help boost my metabolism, maximize my strength, and of course, improve my mobility. Now, if I'm getting enough fiber, that's going to improve my digestive health and also lower key health markers like LDL cholesterol. And just by simply eating enough of both these nutrients, we're less likely to have those cravings that are triggered by emotional eating, such as stress. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, where am I going to get this fiber? My favorite sources of fiber is going to be either fruit or vegetables because on top of the fiber that you're getting, you're also going to get a large heaping of antioxidants, which helps fight inflammation. These next two tips for nutrition are going to be a game changer for you if you are as busy as I am. First and foremost, I call it 20 minute meals. You know for a fact when you look at your weekly schedule that there's gonna be multiple times throughout the week where you're not gonna wanna cook. Plan ahead. When going to the grocery store, I know that at minimum, there's gonna be two nights out of the week where I really do not want to cook. So I'm thinking to myself, what are some easy meals that I can cook in under 20 minutes and takes a low amount of effort to put out? 
Some examples that come to mind is Publix's chicken sausage, where it has no preservatives, it has low saturated fats, and I can throw it into the air fryer and 15 minutes later, it's cooked and ready to go. Why those things are cooking, I'm already steaming rice, and if I'm in a pinch, instead of cutting up a salad, I will use some frozen vegetables that I will throw in the microwave. Another example that you can explore is cutting up some salmon, throwing that into the air fryer with some type of potato, and then while that's cooking, you can stir fry some vegetables. Either way, they're very simple. You can be eating in under 20 minutes, and of course, they're going to be nutrient dense. So to be clear here, the framework that I use when it comes to building out a nutritious meal is a protein source, a fiber slash antioxidant source, and some type of carbohydrate that's going to give me the energy I need for the following day. The next tip that I have for you is to cook a little bit more than you typically would. Most people think of this as meal prepping, but I'm the type of person of if I meal prep, I will forget the food in the fridge and I'll just throw it away a week later. But what I do instead is I will cook with the thought process in mind of I'm also cooking for my next day's lunch. Not only does this keep things fresh, it keeps things with full of variety, but also I won't forget about it in the fridge. So all things being said, this is an amazing and simple strategy that you can use to make sure that you're getting quality nutrition and you're really not adding any extra time. Adding an extra half a cup of rice, adding a little bit more sausage to your air fryer isn't going to add a tremendous amount of time to your cooking process. So there you have it. You can build strength and mobility and improve your overall health by just focusing on three key areas and staying relatively consistent within them. Keep in mind that this channel is used to serve all of you. So if you have a question or you would like to see a specific video or topic, you can comment below. I would be more than willing to help you where I can. 